Hey everyone, today I'm going to be responding to Thomas Heaton's question, is it time to stop cloning things out of our photography? I'm also going to be going through the brand new removal tool in Photoshop Elements 2025. So if you watch a lot of YouTube photography channels like mine, you may know of a smaller channel out there by a guy called Thomas Heaton, and a couple of weeks ago he made a video asking, is it time to stop cloning things out of our images? And as you may have gathered from the title of this video, my opinion to that is no. But all jokes aside, I'm not bashing Thomas Heaton here. I'm a big fan of his channel, he's been doing it a long time and he's very good at what he does. But he did invite people to share their opinions on the question, and that's what I'm doing here. So firstly, I should say that it's not always appropriate to clone things out of your images. If you're doing photojournalism, or documentary photography, record photography, anything like that, then it's really important to capture the image or the scene or the object as accurately as possible. And cloning is not appropriate there. But if you are approaching the subject as an artist or doing photography for art, then I think it's fine to basically do anything that you want as long as you're not trying to deceive anybody. I think part of being a good photographer is telling a story by directing the viewer's attention throughout your image. And that can be quite difficult to do if there are lots of different distractions in there. So just like a painter might choose to leave out elements of a scene that they're painting, you can do that as a photographer as well if you're doing it for art. For me, photography is a multi-part process, so that's planning, capturing the image, and editing it afterwards. And it's worth mentioning that it's always better to avoid distractions or get rid of distractions in the capturing or even the planning phase, rather than the post-processing phase. But if you have captured an image and you really like it, but there is an object in there that you didn't see at the time and it's just not helping the image, then I think it's absolutely fine to get rid of it, particularly when we've got such good software these days that can help us to do that. I'm gonna be using Photoshop Elements 2025 to edit an image today. And I've made a video before using Elements and got quite a few comments from people saying that they'd like to see more of me using the software. So for that reason, as well as the fact that Elements 2025 has got a brand new removal tool, I thought it'd be a good reason to use the software to edit an image. So let's dive in and have a look at that now. Okay, so we've got the software open here. I'm gonna click on Photo Editor and that will bring up this interface. I've already made a video about the different modes such as Quick, Guided, Advanced and some of the tools and features around the interface. So I'm not gonna go into detail about those in this video. But if you want to go back and watch the one I made previously, I'll put a link up top to that. But we are going to be using advanced in this video. So I'll click on that and I'm going to click on file, come down to recently edited and I've got this image here which I brought in earlier. So this is an NEF RAW file and that will automatically open in Camera Raw. If you don't have Camera Raw installed, you might see this screen and that basically means that you'll have to download Camera Raw first. But assuming you've got it installed, the RAW file will open in Camera Raw like this. So I'm gonna edit this now in a similar way to how I would with Lightroom. But if you want to skip to the part where I use the removal tool, then I'll put some timestamps down below and you can fast forward to that bit. But basically what I'm gonna do first is click the auto button just to get some quick edits into the image and from here I'll drop down basic so that we can customize those settings. So I'm going to reduce the temperature a bit because I want it to look quite spooky almost, a bit atmospheric and making it a bit cooler and bringing those blues in in the background I think will help to do that. I think the exposure is all right but I am going to change the whites which I think are just a little bit too high and the same with the blacks I'll bring that down just adds a little bit more punch to the image. We can also do a similar thing with the contrast by putting that up. Highlights, I think, are not bad. We'll leave those more or less where they are. Shadows, again, not too bad, we'll leave those. I will bring the clarity down because I want it to be a little bit softer, a bit more ethereal looking and not overly sharp. And it's a little bit too vibrant at the moment, a bit too colourful, so I'll bring that down just slightly and I'll set the saturation to zero. 
Now we don't have a texture slider here like we would in Lightroom. So I am going to come into detail and just bring the sharpening down a little bit. Because texture and clarity are similar to sharpening anyway. So about there, I don't need to worry about calibration. And the only other thing I'm going to do now before I bring it into elements is to crop the image. So I'm going to set it to a 16 by 9 preset. And just going to bring that in a little bit on the left. Maybe to about there. Maybe bring it across. I think that's okay actually. Just going to slightly bring that tree onto the left third line there. To about there. I think that's okay. I don't need to overwork that. So once I've got that all done, I can just go back onto the editing tools just to double check that it's applied the crop, which it has. And now I can click open. So I want to add a little bit of depth to this image now. I would normally do this in Lightroom with selective editing tools, but because we don't have those here in Elements with Camera Raw, I'm going to do them in Photoshop Elements itself now that I'm out of Camera Raw. So the first thing I'm going to do is just brighten up that background a little bit in the center. So I'm going to come over to Gradient Tool I'm going to select the radial gradient, which is this one here at the bottom, the second one in from the left. And I'm going to set my colour to white. And if I click on the gradient, you see I've got different options, but I want that one there where it's going from white to transparent. And reverse is selected at the minute, I need to uncheck that. And what I need to do first is create a new layer. But you'll see I can't do that, I would normally click there, and I can't do it, it's greyed out. And that's because I need to rename this background layer. And when I try to do that, it tells me that I need to change the color depth to 8 bits rather than 16 bit. So if I click Convert Depth, now I can give that a name if I want, or just leave it as layer 0. And you see now I can click the new layer icon. So with my new layer created, I'll come down here, just between the trees there, and I'll just draw out that radial gradient. So you can see that's quite bright, it's too bright and I need to fix that. So I'm going to come to the layers palette over here on the right, drop down, click screen and then change the opacity to a better level. I think about 40 is okay. And you see what that is doing is bringing our eye into the center of the image because it's brighter now in the center there, it's actually highlighting that area and just drawing us in. And what I want to do though is make it a little bit more realistic looking because we wouldn't have all that brightness in a circle on top of the trees like that. What would actually happen is the brightness would come from behind the trees. So I'm gonna fix that now by adding a layer mask to layer one. So I'm going to come up here to layer at the top, drop that down, come down to layer mask, come across and click reveal all. And now I can paint with black and wherever I paint black that will mask out the white of that layer. So you'll see what I mean if I click on the brush tool here. Like I said I've got black selected as my colour. I've got opacity set to 10. So that's quite low. I don't want it too strong because I want it to be quite subtle. And what I'm going to do, I'm pressing the brackets on my keyboard. So the square brackets, that's the two keys to the left of the return key on the keyboard. You've got a left square bracket and a right one. The left square bracket will make the brush smaller, right will make it bigger. And once I've got the desired size, I'm just going to paint down on that tree. And you see it starts to get rid of that white just where the tree is. And the more I do it, the more it will get rid of the white. I don't want to overdo it. I think that's probably about enough. And I can just do it on this tree here as well. A little bit on this stump here. And also on the ground. 
at the bottom here. So now I've just got that white effect, that brighter effect in the trees behind shining through. You see if I turn that off, you see the difference it makes. I'll probably come down here and get rid of it a little bit as well. Okay. And the second thing I'm going to do to add depth to the image is to add a vignette. So I'm going to create a new layer again and I'm going to use the radial gradient tool again. But this time I'm going to select black as my primary color and I will click the reverse box this time. So now if I click in the center of the image and draw outwards to the edge, I'm going to go past the edge a little bit further to about there. You'll see that's created a dark area all around the edge now. So I'm going to set that to multiply Again, reduce the opacity because I don't want it too strong. Around about 60. And you see we've got a nice vignette now. Adds a lot more mood and atmosphere to the scene. And it also really draws your eye in now because you've got that darker edge and that brighter centre. And it's really pulling you in. Okay, so it's time to talk about removal now. There's an obvious distraction in this image. I don't know if you've spotted it, but it's this in the middle here. These branches and this stump on the ground in the middle there. I quite like the composition of this with the tree on the left, with these leaves on this branch on the right. And there's no way I could have composed this scene without having that unwanted distraction in the middle. So we're gonna get rid of that. And like I said, there is a brand new tool in Elements 2025. It's the removal tool. And it is described as an AI removal tool, although I think it works more like a clone maybe with a little bit of AI, but it's more like a content-aware clone, really. Um, and to use that, I'm gonna select layer zero. I'm actually gonna hide the other two layers for now, just so we can see what's going on. And it's this tool here, under Enhance, you'll see it says their removal tool. So there are different options in here, down at the bottom, we've got Spot Healing, Healing Brush, but the one we want is Removal Tool. I'm going to leave opacity set to 50%. You can adjust the size of the brush to whatever you want. Like I said, you can do that with the bracket keys as well. And I'm going to leave remove after each stroke unselected. If you have that selected, basically, as you let go of the button when making a selection, it'll automatically start removing that area. You see it's doing that there. But I'm going to undo that and untick that. And now what I can do is start selecting and letting go and selecting again. And that allows me to change my brush size in between as I go along. So I'm just going to cross that off for now. What I am going to do is make a new layer. So this means that we can have our patch over this area on a new layer, which means we can turn it on and off. But to make that work, I need to click sample all layers. Okay, we're ready to go now. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm just gonna start painting over the object that I want to remove. So I speeded that up there, but it is relatively quick with the new selection brush tool. Okay, so with that all selected and highlighted, I can click the tick here, and that will start to remove that object and fill it in, hopefully, with some leaves. So it's not perfect, as you can see, but from a distance, it does do a good job of patching that area up. It's a bit more powerful in Photoshop itself. And if you want really good results for printing at large sizes, I would recommend using a tool like that. But just for on screen, from a distance, you can't really tell too much. And it's not too bad in Elements 2025. So you can see if we turn that off, 
that's with the distraction. It's pulling your eye towards it. I want you to be looking into the image as if you're walking through it. You're almost tripping over that object with it there. And when I turn it off, you see you've got a clear path now. You can walk into the image, there's much more depth. And I think that's a warranted reason to remove it. So I'll just turn those layers back on. I think my vignette is just a little bit too strong, so I'll turn that down. And that's my final image. In his video, Thomas also posed the question, where does it end with cloning? But I'm gonna flip that question around and say, where does it end with not cloning? Not editing our images, not cropping them, not removing dust spots, not using filters to create certain effects, or not even letting the camera edit or process JPEGs for us, because that's what it does. It basically does the editing for us and produces a JPEG. One thing I would say, and I've said this before in other videos, Generative AI is not the same kind of thing. So the removal tool in Elements 2025 does say that it's an AI powered tool, but it's not really the same as Generative Fill AI. I think it's more like a clever content aware tool or a clone stamp. And the reason that I am more skeptical about Generative AI is because it's not photography. As I've said before, photography is making an image by capturing light. And if you are creating imagery using digital means or anything other than light, it's not photography. I think it's fine to remove things, to crop them, to use removal tools or cloning. But when you're actually creating new data and new pixels in your image using generative AI, I think that that is probably crossing a line. But that's my opinion on the subject. Let me know what you think about Thomas's video, his question and my opinion on it and put those down below in the comments. But that's about it for this video, so a huge thank you for watching. If you have liked the video in any way, please just give me a thumbs up down below. If you're a regular viewer, I really do appreciate that. And if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can just click down there on the big red button. Or over here on this little picture of me, and that way you'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you can join me for the next one, but until then, thanks a lot everyone, and bye for now.